All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this lit chat. My name is Amani. (laughs) I hope so. Yes. (laughs) My name's Amani Phillips. I'm the adult program coordinator with the Jacksonville Public Library. So um, thank you all for joining us today for this lit chat. Some of you may recognize Eric from last year's Book Fest. Um, Eric is a local author and podcaster. Uh, He holds a bachelor's degree from FSCJ in digital media. And he is the co-author of the Epic Fails History series for middle grade readers. Um, So on top of all of that, um, he's also the founder of the Epic Fails of History podcast, um, an editor on Podcasters Assembles, and a co-host on Too Young for This Track, a Star Trek podcast. Um, as well as a contributor to geek to geek Media and ComicZombie.net. Our moderator for this afternoon is Jasmine Turner, a museum professional and certified volunteer administrator. So she holds a Bachelor's of Arts in History and English from the University of North Florida. Her passions for museums and history has taken her to positions at the Mosh here in Jacksonville, Fort Mose and St. Augustine, the National Park Service, and more. Uh, thank you both for being here this afternoon. Um, And before I turn um, it over, I just wanna go over a few things. Um, So for viewing the program, it's best to view it in speaker view. So your screen's kind of focusing on our two speakers this afternoon. Um, And you can find that by hovering over the top right of your screen. And you'll notice there's just a little thing for view and you can check whether it's in gallery or speaker. Along with that, if any of you have questions or comments you want to make throughout the lit chat, you can put it in the chat um, and we will get to them uh, in the last about 20 minutes of the program. So feel free to add in all the questions you have in for Eric. Um, And that is all I have for you. Um, Eric and Jasmine, I'll turn the mic over to you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you for having us. Um, so I just want to start off saying- Matt, um, Paul, you know, you... I think there's a little bit of a delay on my end. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll work with it. Um, anyway, so uh, one of the great things about Lit Chats is um, how we get to meet authors and learn more about their process. Um, And oftentimes, sometimes the person who's moderating doesn't know the author. But in this case, um, I was actually with Eric through some of the process. Um, So you'll get, so if you, if you hear us like saying inside jokes, that's what's going on is that we do in fact actually know each other. Um, (laughs) So Eric, you're ready to uh, start. I'll start off um, with explaining about a little bit about how we came across these questions. so as Eric and I were talking with each other, we sort of realized, sure. um, well, number one, both of us are huge uh, fans of different forms of media from movies to comic books. Um, I often look at it through a certain lens of history and he looks at it as well. Um, so when we go to a movie, we, we tend to talk about like these very like highbrow <laughs> level thing. And so Without we realized as about um, the story about uh, how Epic Fails came about, that it really sort of followed this um, whole cycle um, called The Hero's Journey by Joseph Campbell. Um, so if these questions feel familiar, it's, it's because they reflect that cycle. Uh, so the first question for you, Eric. I thought that was is... a cool way to frame it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, if you also know this uh, literary reference, um, we well, yeah, that's a bit it. of a delay. My bad. Yeah, a little bit of a interrupting chicken moments. <laughs> if you know that children's book. <laughs> um, so the first question for you, Eric, is what first inspired you to begin writing the Epic Fields book series? What was that? Sorry, I didn't catch that last part. Uh, what first inspired you to begin writing the Epic Fails book series? So I think a big part of it was growing up, I wasn't a huge fan of history. And I think it wasn't really until college that I really took a deeper dive past just the surface level stuff. And I think a big part of that was um, the way it was taught. And a lot of times, you know, like in public schools and stuff, at least in the 90s, you know, it was all about just memorizing facts and dates. And you didn't really get a lot of the context that went with that. 
Um, so when, you know, for example, you know, uh, a lot of times, you know, we tend to put historical figures on a pedestal. And um, when it came to writing my blog initially, I wanted to kind of take it from a different perspective. Um, you know, a good example is Columbus, you know, uh, you know, we were taught that he was this great explorer um, that discovered America. But when you really look into it, it's not quite that black and white. You know, he wasn't even the first European to discover uh, North America. And uh, not to mention, he did it by accident. And he didn't even realize that he had stumbled into a new place. Um, and on top of all that, he was kind of a jerk. So uh, that's really kind of what sparked this interest to kind of dig a little deeper and look into some of these stories. Um, and, you know, of course, the blog eventually led to the podcast. And uh, when it came to the book series, we really wanted to take a look at some of the the fail. Uh, the first natural choice, of course, was the Wright brothers, because they failed a dozen times before they finally got it right. They created the world's first airplane, all because they didn't give up. And because of that, they changed the world. My next question is, why did you choose to write for a middle school audience rather than adults? I think a big part of that was kind of the theme we were going for. And like I said, you know, I guess, I guess, okay. So the short answer is that I would have loved these books as a kid. And I think that's kind of the big thing for me is that like, you know, if I had read these as a kid, I would would have been um, obsessed with history early on. And I think there's a lot we can uh, both in terms of like finding inspiration and overcoming obstacles or whether it's uh, what not to do. You know, there's a lot of examples of that. Obviously, that's, you know, what I built the. <laughs> so we really want to drive forward, though, was how we all make mistakes sometimes and it's just a matter of um, learning from them you know learning from the past as we move forward um, and not giving up it's all about perseverance my next question for you is were there any challenges um, writing for a younger audience For me, the biggest thing was just the word count, honestly, um, especially when it came to the the NASA book that we did. There was just so much cool stuff to cover that I went way over word count. Like I had to literally, you know, narrow it down to the essentials. There was, uh, you know, and that's that that was really the biggest challenge um, as far as those, like just narrowing it down, like making it, uh, you know, a better, more consumable size. You know, it, it didn't need to be like the size of Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Sorry, the only reason why I'm laughing at your Lord of the Rings reference is because right now at Mosh, we have the smog dragon. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Oh, uh, lost it. What do you oh, that's awesome. Is... Yeah. <laughs> When you first started, what were some of your doubts and how did you overcome or work through your doubts? Well, really, I still have doubts. <laughs> um, just ask my fiance, like I stress out and worry about everything needlessly. But I think a big uh, part of overcoming that is to be aware of that. Um, I've gotten a lot better at managing it because, yeah, it's just you got to push through. You know, you just got to, uh, sometimes it just helps to take a step back and get a better perspective. Can you tell us more about your writing process? One with uh, ADHD, it really does help um, to kind oh, of. Let me pop in just for a quick second. Um, I think I just want to interrupt for a quick second just to see if possibly taking your backgrounds off might help with the sound. Okay. Okay. If, if you want, I can turn off my video. It might go a little smoother uh, as far oh, as the, no. the internet connection stuff. Yeah, I think let's just start with the backgrounds because that might be it. 
Um, okay. Let's see if I can. Yeah. Um, sorry. <laughs> oh, no problem. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it'll Not just take a sure second. Let's see. So that'll just be, you'll see at the bottom right of your you screen go. on stop video, there's a little arrow. Okay, so we're thinking sometimes so Zoom uses yeah. up a. And then on the right, there's a stop video, and there's a little arrow that points up. Oh. Okay. Yeah, but I think maybe if you keep your. Let's see, Katie, you want to. Okay. Let me yeah. see if I can. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, you're good. Just want to make sure everybody can hear you as all. Well. Exactly. We want, we're missing some of your good answers and we want everybody to hear everything. So I think everybody's okay with hanging tight for one sec. Okay. How's that? Oh, wait. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> and yeah, I've um, I've run into the delay issue before on like podcasts and stuff. Sometimes it helps to turn off the video. So if that does become a real issue, let me know and I can do that. Okay, sure thing. All right. Well, for now, let's see how this all runs. <laughs> I'll get out of here. <laughs> Thank you everyone for bearing with us on this. <laughs> All right, let me know when. Oh, I'm good when are you are. <laughs> uh, oh, welcome Dan to the chat. <laughs> All right, so the question was, uh, when you first started, what were some of your doubts? How did you overcome, oh wait, someone. Nope. I think it was the tell us about your writing process one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so a big thing for me is I have to just minimize distractions. So whether that's like just catching up on housework ahead of time, just so like I'm not thinking about it. Um, if I can really just like carve out like a few hours and just kind of focus, um, I can crank through it, you know. Um, but yeah, I, sometimes I'll put on like some music in the background, usually something without lyrics, something like maybe techno-y, you know. <laughs> And how did you meet your co-author, Ben Thompson? So the funny thing is we wrote all four of these books before we actually met in person. Uh, we collaborated online. Um, we initially got in touch. Um, I reached out to him because I was a fan of his work uh, with you know, uh, the Badass of the Week stuff. And um, it was kind of funny because I was working on like kind of the opposite of what he was doing. It, you know, we approached history in a very different way, but it was also we kind of retained that humor and stuff. Um, so we eventually, long story short, ended up collaborating on this project. But he lives in Seattle and I live here in Florida. So um, when we when it came to our first book tour together, um, he was flying out here and I was running late to the actual event. Um, and there was a huge crowd of people there. Uh, it was crazy. I got in uh, just in time. We shook hands and we turned and faced the audience and did our presentation. So that was pretty, uh, that was pretty fun. But it went really smoothly, honestly. Uh, and yeah, we really hit it off. We've become good friends since then. I've been to his wedding and, um, you know, we keep in touch and all that. Um, done a few, you know, podcast projects here and there and all that since then. Um, so it's kind of interesting because this whole uh, thing happened way before um, the COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, what was it, it like working with Ben, even though there was physical distance? Yeah, so um, it was an interesting process, but um, I think it helped because we kind of had a, like a similar approach to this and a similar writing style. Um, what we did was we kind of narrowed down which topics we wanted to cover. Um, we figured out what the chapters were going to be. Then we kind of split it up, divvied them up. And then we worked on our separate chapters and then we swapped and kind of edited each, each other's work, um, and kind of made sure that the tone lined up throughout the books, um, and kind of went from there. But yeah, it, 
it worked out really nicely. Like, uh, uh, it was, it was a fun project to work on. You know, we would definitely love to do more of these. And then how did Tim Foley get involved as the illustrator on the series? So um, what's funny is I didn't even talk to Tim until after the books were already out. Um, but uh, initially when I was pitching this project early on, uh, I had another artist that I had in mind and I didn't realize that a lot of the big publishers actually have in-house artists. I just didn't realize that at the time. So I was a little nervous about how this was going to turn out, but we had no complaints about the art. Uh, Tim Foley did an amazing job. He really understood the tone we were going for and he just kind of rolled with it, you know? And it was really cool because he really expanded on a lot of what we were, you know, what we were talking about. Cause uh, some of the stuff, like it really, I think especially for younger readers, it really added another layer there, you know, kind of made it more relatable. Um, but yeah, I was really impressed with, um, a lot of his work especially like with the covers i mean have you seen these 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 are awesome like that was all him um yeah we had you know very very little complaint i have to say that uh when you look for your book very the talented book, guy it the the colors just pop they really pop out and we'll talk about that in a second definitely um what was the research process okay like book series yeah, so uh, there was a lot of research. Um, and I want to say, well, first of all, I should probably point out that how much I appreciate the Jacksonville Public Libraries uh, as a resource, because 90% of my research came from y'all. I I was living at Fort Caroline at the time, and um, I was at the library over there like every other day. I used to get like just stacks and stacks of books. I was like benching textbooks. Uh, I did so much reading in such a short period of time because we had like a really uh, hard and fast deadline on those first two books. Um, so it was it was an inter it went by in a blur, but it was a really interesting process. Um, I ended up uh, taking a trip down to the Kennedy Space Center for a day at one point and just got all kinds of notes, um, which really helped out. Um, it was really interesting, though, when uh, we were talking to our editor early on about like which subjects we wanted to cover. Our editor suggested that we do a president's book. It was kind of vague on like what he wanted out of it. So we were like, OK, which ones? Um, and we kind of just ended up researching all of them and ended up kind of narrowing down like what works best for the book. So we wanted to like cover all the big ones, of course, and talk about some of the failures they had to overcome. But also, of course, there was some of the not so great presidents that we, you know, had to include and in some of the shenanigans with that. Um, so for this next one, um, I have a little bit of an answer for it as well. Um, what did it feel like to sure. see your book in person for the first time? Oh, man, that was... Uh, surreal you know it was it was definitely an exhilarating moment it was like the first time it felt real like I had this tangible book in my hands I was like did I write this like I was reading through and I was like this is this is interesting like it was I don't even know how to explain it but um you know because we were still that was it was like an early copy and we were still working on the final edits I was more you know stressed than excited so um and we've still had a couple of books to write at that point uh, but once the books were out to the public, that's where it got interesting because I started seeing photos online of people with the books popping up. And that was just, that was something else. That was, that was a really cool moment. In fact, when the books uh, were first coming out, I would go out of my way uh, to go to like bookstores and stuff just to see if I could spot them on the shelf here and there. Just, yeah, <laughs> I was geeking out about it for sure. Yeah. So um, for me, uh it kind of felt a little bit like being the Alfred to your Batman. Um, and in, yeah, in the you fact were that extremely supportive every step of the way. <laughs> oh, sorry. I delay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for a, a part of my career was um, doing marketing and social media for uh, various historic entities. Um, and so when I would find Eric's in the bookstore, I would um, first, I would like, clear the shelf and then I would make sure that his cover would be facing um, frontwards 
So then that way it looks like um, this is a featured book. <laughs> um, so this this uh, format is called guerrilla marketing, um, but it was a lot of fun. And then um, mm. something that if, if any of you ever have uh, friends who are authors, if you actually go to their Amazon page and write reviews, it helps them out a lot too. Um, so I just, I'll plug that as well. Um, That's true. And so who were some of the people who, again, were your Alfreds to your Batmans, um, who uh, helped you on your way to becoming a published <laughs> author? Well, I, de I definitely have to give you a lot of credit, um, you know, because you were really supportive every step of the way, um, even when I was freaking out and tearing my hair out. Um, so that was that was pretty awesome. Um, I'm not always the best about like promoting myself. So it does help uh, for other people to, you know, <laughs> say something. Um, but yeah, um, I ended up writing like the, the longest acknowledgments page on on these books. And really, it could have been four times as long, honestly. Um, and unfortunately, I wrote it pretty early on, or else I would have added a lot more people onto it. But maybe it's for the best just for word count. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there's um, obviously this didn't happen in a vacuum. I have so many people to thank. Um, I will say that um, I don't know if these books would have been possible without Ben Thompson. So I really appreciate uh, his contribution to them, of course. Um, but another big one I would say is um, when I was first getting into history, a big part of that was because of uh, a few professors of mine, uh, namely my humanities professor, Jason Whitmarsh. He was uh, definitely a huge inspiration early on, uh, definitely sparked that interest. And I ended up taking a lot of extra history courses just because, like I didn't have to, I was going for a digital media degree, but I just had this interest and I just wanted to learn more. Um, I have enough, I probably have enough history credits for history minor, but FSCJ didn't offer minors or at least in history. So, you know, whatever. Uh, but yeah, my history professor, uh, Wesley Moody um, was, was also uh, definitely a big part of that. Well, we might have to make you an honorary Osprey so that way we can get your um, history minor official. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for those of you who don't know, that's the. I'm, I'm considering just going back just to just to have it official, you know. <laughs> and um, for those of you who don't know, uh, FSCJ is the Florida State College of Jacksonville. Um, so the next question is, uh, what it have was, been? It uh, was FCCJ, yeah, I think. Well, at the time, yeah, Sorry. yeah. <laughs> um, the next question is, what? have been your greatest personal challenges with writing and publishing? So honestly, for me, uh, writing's the easy part. And it's one of those things like just the more you do it, the better you get at it. The hard part, and I think I meant I touched on this earlier, is kind of getting myself out there and promoting the books and things like that. Um, that take, took some getting used to because I'm sort of an introvert. It didn't come naturally, but I just kept pushing myself. And I think it's gotten a little bit easier over time. But um, when it comes to actually publishing, if anyone out there is looking to um, pursue that, I will say, I think from what I understand, maybe 90% of it is just being able to deal with rejection and moving on and continuing forward. Uh, because even early on with this series, like when I was pitching it, it, it took a while before it actually got picked up, you know, um, and even after I was published, I, there's a few projects that I was working on that just never got anywhere. You know, I got I had a dozen different uh, projects that were shot down. Um, so, but I didn't give up. I'm still, still going, you know. Um, can you tell us about what happened when you were invited to the Smithsonian Museums in Washington, D.C.? Oh, boy. Wow. Yeah, that's a story. Um, <laughs> so first of all, we didn't believe it. Like we were like, is this real? Like the Smithsonian, the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. It was the, uh, the American History Museum and the Air and Space Museum. We were supposed to do signings there. This was back in 2019. It was January. Ben and I were, we, of course, we said yes. There was no way we could say no to that. So we, we we bought our plane tickets. We flew out. We got a hotel. And then that week, like right as we were going to do our signings, the government shutdown happened. 
And you know, we were just like, you know what? It's it's on brand. Epic fails. You know, like let's just roll with it. We had a lot of fun, even though it was freezing. This was during the polar vortex going on, but. We showed up at the museums anyways. They were closed and we took pictures in front of the signs that said closed due to the government shutdown. And then we did a video on YouTube and we we're like, hey, buy our new book, Not So Great Presidents. You know, we're locked out of our book signing here at the Smithsonian's, but yeah, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. <laughs> um, but the, the great news is, is that we were invited back later on in the year that summer. And we did, did end up doing our, our, our signings at the uh, Smithsonian Museums, which was I don't even know how to describe it. It was something else. We were both geeking out the entire time, especially at the Air and Space Museum, because we wrote about so much of the stuff that's on display there. And we were just like, oh, look, it's the Redstone rocket or hey, it's the you know, it's the Wright Brothers uh, wind tunnel and things like that. So that was it was really uh, something else. It was a cool time. Awesome opportunity. I remember um, I just kept on sending you messages on Facebook and saying, hey, did you visit the, this restaurant? Hey. Yeah, I really hope you meet this friend. Up there. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so, just yeah, like, definitely. I you know, wish we had spent more from... time there. DC is awesome. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so like again, like kind of like that um, Alfred to your Batman, like when Batman goes out on the <laughs> missions, and Alfred's like, you know, sitting there behind the screen, like, okay, turn to your right, turn to your left. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> it was that was just a, a lot of fun and just um kind of amazing like well, not kind of but it was just it was amazing to see your book series um just no pun intended but fly like shoot off like a rocket <laughs> uh, i appreciate that it was an adventure <laughs> it was um so then my next question is um a little bit more recent history um how has the COVID 19 pandemic affected mm. you as a creator yeah, so um, obviously it was a rough. It was a rough. Twenty twenty was a rough year for everyone. Uh, I think we can all agree. And I don't want to downplay it by any means. Uh, it was definitely, you know, um, for me personally, you would think as a writer, um, you know, being quarantined, being isolated for all that time, um, you would think that'd be conducive to writing, but it had the opposite effect on me. Um, you know, just, um, I, I had struggled to get any amount of writing done that the entire time. And, um, what I ended up doing is throughout that year, I ended up leaning a lot more into the podcasting side of things. Um, and I think a big part of that was because of it, it allowed me to like virtually connect with other people, other creative people. And, um, you know, we were able to kind of collaborate on something we were, you know, something positive, you know. Um, and so, yeah, I think podcasting really got me through um, 2020. Yeah, I know um, on my end of things, um, because of the topics of history that I talk about, um, particularly um, in enslavement, um, the civil rights movements, and then everything that was going on last year um, in the Twin Cities, because uh, I have friends that live up there. Mm. And so around that time, um, you were talking about doing a podcast for um, James Bond. And I had said to you, oh, well, I've never actually oh, yeah. watched a James Bond movie. <laughs> and so um, yeah. the idea that you pitched to me was... Um, watching some of the movies from the vantage point of being somebody who's completely new um and then the aspect that we were going to hit on there was um this whole con this controversy over having a, a, a black female james bond um and you know since that movie has not yet been released um and we'll talk about that a little bit later um Still as i was saying it's a podcast this is not a podcast <laughs> <laughs> um, for the little chat. Um, so my next question is, why do you think learning from history is important? Oh man, there's so many reasons. Um, and I might have uh, talked about this a little bit already, but I think there's so many great examples of like inspirational people um, 
that had to like overcome insane adversity. Uh, there's a lot of great examples of what not to do, you know, <laughs> there's, um, you know, it also, it adds a lot of context to why society is the way it is today. And sometimes you can get a better perspective on things and it makes you question like, okay, so why is that the way it is just because we've always, always done it? That doesn't make any sense, you know? So, um, you know, it just, it gives people a better understanding of the world that they live in, honestly. And I think especially for kids, it's important because they're the ones that have to deal with a lot of the mistakes of the past. A lot of the problems that we have today are because of what happened previously. So it gives them a better chance to actually Sorry, I was just waiting to see if there was a little bit of delay there. Um, so then uh, so. this next question, this next question is a little bit of a um, circling back because um, you mentioned how you are a very humble author. Um, and then that's why well, those I mean, of us who know have to, <laughs> I, well, me personally, I, I was poking you a lot. I'm like, come on, you, you need to make these announcements about what's going <laughs> on. Uh, so what was the most unexpected recognition that your series earned? Oh, um, I'd have to say it was when, let's see, it was the National Science Teachers Association. They nominated us as one of the, at least for the Wright Brothers book, one of the best um, STEM books of the year. That was um, pretty mind blowing. <laughs> it was a huge honor for sure. Yeah, so I remember... Um... The yeah, recognition. Course, the uh, <laughs> oh, just that, you know, just that. <laughs> um, I know for from my end of things, uh, because I also have um, many friends who are, who teach. Um, so for my end of things, the thing that I was the most excited to announce, and I'm, and I kept on like poking you, like, come on, make the announcement, is uh, when Scholastic <laughs> gave you your recognition. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, I guess the the books were in Scholast in the Scholastic uh, book magazines at one point, um, and I don't I don't think I ever managed to get a copy of it. So if you ever find one, let me know. Um, but yeah, that was that was pretty cool because I was a huge fan of those as a kid. You know, I used to read all the time, and um, yeah, it's like you know I I keep using this word, but it was surreal. <laughs> I'm still having a hard time believing it, you know. Um, so my next question is, if given the chance, what other topics would you like to cover in a future history book? Oh, yeah. Um, the, there's a whole list. Ben and I put together a list of at least 20 different topics. We could write this series forever, but there was two big ones for me that I, I hope to tackle at, at one point. Uh, pirates and inventors. Um, inventors fit into the theme so well because there were so many different like accidental discoveries and inventions and, and all that, you know. Um, and then of course, pirates, you know, the whole golden age of piracy, that itself was a big epic fail. I mean, it was um, a number of factors led to it and then, you know, yeah, everything about it, really. Uh, but I've always been kind of fascinated by that period. And just, yeah, as, uh, you know, something I could dig my teeth into. Are there any topics that you'd like to revisit from these books, maybe for a slightly older audience? Uh, yeah. Um, like I mentioned, uh, with the, uh, the race to space, um, there's so much to cover there. Um, that's a bit of an understatement. But with the books, we really kind of focused on the early days of NASA leading up to the Apollo missions. And I would love to kind of dig a little deeper with everything that's happened since then. Um, there, there's there been so many crazy advances that you don't really hear about a whole lot, uh, like the International Space Station. You know, it's the size of a football field and it's orbiting us right now. Um, and all the, you know, there's reusable rockets, thanks to SpaceX. Um, and you know, all the plans with uh, going to Mars, you know, in the next 10 to 20 years, I want to say. So there's a lot, it's an exciting time to be a fan of that kind of stuff. Um, I would definitely love to uh, write more about that. 
And then, of course, with the president's book, when we were writing it, it was before the uh, the previous election. So I think there's a few more things we could probably write about in there. Um, so uh, since we are starting to get, um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, since there are some questions that we're starting to get from the audience that um, uh, fit well with some of my future ones, I'm kind of going to mesh them together if that's all right for everybody. Um, so for this next one, uh, it, the question is, do you have any favorite history books that you'd recommend? And um, to uh, smush um, Jeremy's question, um, I'll tack on um, also, what are some podcasts sure. that you listen to? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, favorite history book. There's a few. Um, <laughs> I think one of my one of my favorites um, speaking of pirates is, uh, Colin Woodward's, uh, The Republic of Pirates. Um, it's the ultimate pirate book, like it has everything. Um, and the way he writes, it's, uh, feels like less like a history book and more like, you know, like, a, an epic saga. Um, so that was a really good one. Um, I also highly recommend Brad Meltzer's work, especially the Lincoln conspiracy, um, that was a fascinating time, and it's a story that a lot of people don't really know about. So I thought that was really cool. Um, as far as younger, uh, younger audience, um, if you like the Epic Fails books, definitely check out Ben's Guts and Glory series, which is also uh, kind of geared towards a similar audience, middle grade and stuff. And those are a lot of fun. Um, as far as podcasts, I listen to so many podcasts. <laughs> I, um, I listen uh, to podcasts whenever I'm driving or doing chores or whatever. Um, so it kind of depends on the day, but I really enjoy uh, How Did This Get Made, uh, which is pretty funny. Um, it's just a group of comedians that talk about really bad movies. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Kevin Smith's podcast uh, with Mark Bernard and Fat Man on Batman. That's another fun one. Uh, both of those are kind of not not super kid friendly, just as a heads up. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so for the kids out there, uh, make sure that you have parental guidance. <laughs> um, and again, so I'm going to be smishing some of these questions together. Um, in addition to your epic fails of history podcast, what other podcasts are you involved with? Yeah, so a few. <laughs> I'll try to keep it short, but um, the main ones right now, um, because Epic Fails of History, you know, my podcast is currently on hiatus. Um, these these past couple of years, I was really focused on, um, you know, a couple other projects, uh, but that one is coming back. Uh, we're doing season three soon. We recorded an episode back in January, but things just got kind of crazy, and I haven't had time to edit it yet. But there's a few fun topics coming up with that one, uh, the French Revolution and the Mongol invasions of Japan. So that should be fun. Um, as far as my other podcasts, though, uh, Too Young for This Trek, a cast I do. I'm one of the co-hosts on there, and it's about three um, Trek fans who are introducing Star Trek to a total noob, someone who hasn't seen Star Trek, like any of them at all. But what's funny is it's in a completely random order. And so we got like this crazy mix of like really bad episodes and really good episodes so that that's been a lot of fun uh we do that mostly weekly um and what's really cool is one of the co-hosts on that show is from australia and then another one lives out west so we're in totally different time zones but we still manage to make it work um and then i also and i th think you brought this up podcasters assemble um is one that i'm currently editing um and for each season of that show, we've tackled a different franchise. Um, and it's basically where different podcasts from around the world are invited to um, contribute like entries on these different movies. And I just kind of edit them together into this narrative, um, something, you know, uh, somewhat listenable. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we've covered uh, Marvel, Star Wars, like you mentioned, James Bond. Uh, we did the uh, Godzilla and Kong movies. And then uh, we just wrapped up the season on the Mortal Kombat movies. And we're going to be back in the fall with Ghostbusters and the next summer with Jurassic Park. So that's been a lot of fun. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's it's been interesting. So I'm going to bring in um, some of Dan's questions. Um, it's a little bit longer. So if you could wait until I give you a thumbs up so that way we don't um, 
uh, interrupt each other. <laughs> um, in your experience, how much does passion play in writing? Um, Dan is considering writing as an activity um, now that he is blessed with nearly endless free time, which is a story in itself, but he doesn't feel passionate about it. Wait, he doesn't feel passionate about it? Yeah, he doesn't feel passionate about it. What's your advice? I think it might be good to find something that you are passionate about um, as far as writing goes. Because, well, okay, it depends, I guess, uh, um, on what it's for. <laughs> if it's something that you intend to, to put out there and publish, I think you have to be passionate about it because it's a lot of work. You know, it's a lot of work. I think we did, I can't, I've lost track of how many drafts we did on each of these books, but yeah, you really have to kind of be committed to it. Um, but yeah, just, um, you got to find uh, something you're really interested in, something that you feel compelled to, to write about and get out there. Yeah, I'm going to answer this one a little bit um, as well, uh, Dan. Um, so as I mentioned before, uh, the topics of history that um, I tend to discuss are very emotionally heavy. Um, so sometimes uh, well, what helps for me is a genre switch. Um, so think of like you're actually like your least favorite genre and just put a timer on for like five to 10 minutes and just try it. Um, sometimes um, I think as creators, we worry so much about the final form um, that we get lost in the process. Um, so like uh, Eric, <laughs> okay, so Eric is a witness to this. Um, I'll give a really good example. Um, so for the longest time, I haven't been able to uh, figure out a, a subject area to paint. And I realized that it was because I was spending so much of my time um, uh, because I was uh, working at Arlington House, which is the Robert E. Lee Memorial, um, in 2017 when Charlottesville happened. And then I found out that there is this painting technique called um, paint pours. And uh, you basically, you don't come up with a form and it's literally just this liquid paint and you, you swirl it around and that becomes the form. Um, so sometimes just switching gears for the topic or the genre, sometimes that'll open up your mind. Um, and it's, it's also helpful to talk with your friends because you, you never know um, what inspiration can come from that either. Um, let's see. Yeah, sometimes it's all how then, you look at it. I, I like that idea of like mixing genres, you know, like uh, taking something that you might not normally uh, be interested in just kind of, you know, remixing it. That actually reminds me of uh, one of my favorite, uh, and I'll open this question up to the audience, actually. Sure. Um, so one of my personal favorite genre mishmashes um, is the uh, series with uh, Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter, oh, yes. and uh, Pride, <laughs> Prejudice, and Zombies. Um, so I, I have a question for the audience. Um, since we're talking about uh, the mismatches between um, writing and podcasts, uh, do you have any favorite media or topic mismatches that are you know unexpected but fun? And uh, you can you can type your uh, answer in the chat, and I'll read it off as well. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, let's see. I'm going to do a quick scan. Um, so Dan also says, uh, you just said that you found it difficult to write during COVID. Uh, please describe how you write your tools, your space, and how you overcome the writer's block. Yeah, so um, I think for me, writing's kind of a compulsion. It's something that I just kind of need to do. and. Um, it's just a matter of like finding the best space and um, all that to do it in. Um, the main tool that I use is my laptop. Um, I do sometimes like I'll get an inspiration when I'm out and about. So a lot of times I'll like stop to jot some notes down on my phone. Uh, I have like a little note app uh, and that's been really helpful. Um, but yeah, it's just, um, it does help to 
I, I have a hard time writing around others. So a, a lot of times I'll try to schedule that time for like when the kids are at school or something else is going on and just try to like block out a few hours to really get something done. It depends on what I'm working on too, though. So um, I'm not sure if that quite got to the meat of the question though. <laughs> Um, um, so, uh, my second to last question, uh, do you sure. have any other upcoming writing projects? Yeah, I've, um, I've got a half dozen I'm juggling at any given point. Um, there's two main ones though, that I'm really hoping to get out by the end of the year. Uh, there's this one that I've been working on for a couple of years now. It's, um, a sci-fi detective story, um, called 2299. It's basically a murder mystery in space. And um, I'm on like the ninth draft. I'm really trying to like refine this thing before I send it to an editor. Um, but I don't know if that's gonna come out as like an ebook or like an audio drama. It's still kind of too early to say, but I'm excited about it. I think there's a lot of potential with that one. Um, another one I'm working on um, is a collaboration with an artist friend of mine. Uh, we're doing a, a horror comic book called Sunshine Stuff. Date. and to i'm not going to give away the big twist because there's a pretty big twist in the first issue but um it's basically about a group of broke college students who are forced to kind of hunker down during a hurricane and something goes horribly wrong so <laughs> and right right now with that one that just kind of like waiting on the final art uh from the artist and we'll kind of go from there but we're hoping to pitch it to image comics and we've got a few other on our others on our list and we'll kind of see where that goes uh, so i have um uh, just a few questions for the audience out there um, again if you would uh, put your answers in, um what topic would you like to see covered in a future epic sales book hmm um, to, our, to our audience members. So I, I think I might have touched on this a little bit earlier, but yeah, inventors and pirates. It's it's between those two. Um, <laughs> in fact, um, when I was talking in front of a class at one point, I had I did a poll with the students about what they would like to see more, and it came out like 50-50 pretty much. So um, <laughs> those are definitely at the top of my list. Uh, I think they really fit with the theme pretty well. just typing this out <laughs> oh you're good also um and then my other question for the audience is, oh that's for the audience um, and imagine my bad yeah it's <laughs> okay <laughs> um my next question for the audience is a bit of an imagination one um when we get to mars what lessons from earth history should we take with us that's a good question Oh, and it looks like Dan mentioned uh, Bezos. So it's a good point. Yeah. Um, it's not just Elon Musk that's doing things with space. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Dan has answered um, epic sales of private space ventures. Eric mentioned SpaceX, but don't forget Bezos' effort, also all those others. Uh, we have a question from the audience. Have you ever considered writing about female historical figures? Definitely, definitely. In fact, uh, one of the projects that I was considering that I'm still hoping to maybe do something with one of these days is a book series on um, uh, unsung heroes of history. And there's, there's a lot of um, really really cool stories that a lot of people don't know about, like Sybil Luddington um, during the revolution, uh, Bessie Coleman, um, she was um, one of the early aviators, um, African-American female that a lot of people don't know about. Um, so yeah, I would totally be down to that, to do that. I think it's actually uh, for, the, for the Epic Fails podcast, that's something we're gonna be doing this next season is having a segment on epic winds of history and that, would include a lot of those people that your average person doesn't really hear about a whole lot. All right, so we have an answer from uh, Jordan. 
And they say that one of the lessons that we should take to Mars is to take care of the planet and don't selfishly abuse its resources. Hmm. And Jeremy says that uh, they love the idea of epic wins with overlooked historical, especially female figures. Yeah. Um, another question for the audience that I have is, what inspires you to learn about history? Uh, Dan wants to know, uh, have you read Seven Eves by Neil Stevenson? Um, epic fail, then epic survival. Strong female cast. I haven't. It sounds like something I definitely need to check out, though. Mm, I'm trying to think if, if I have an answer for this one as well. Mm. Um. For me, it's it's really seeing um, the issues that are going on, and um, oftentimes there are things that are going on in the news, and um, my friends don't have a historical background, um, mm -hmm. so sometimes I'll try to uh, explain what's going on. Um, for instance, um, I don't know if you have all heard about the recent uh, bonnet controversy, um, but there's actually a historical reason why a uh, black woman would cover their hair and it was because um, it was actually part of the slave code laws that oh, um, they were forced to hide part of their beauty. Um, and sometimes uh, when we don't have that historical background, um, decisions can be made that aren't necessarily wise ones. Um, so that oh, actually no. comes up to another question. And then I think this will be the final question um, oh, that okay. I'll ask everybody. So uh, Eric, this is open to you. Uh, sure. Audience, this is open to you as well. Um, have you ever had an experience where you made a mistake? Um, what happened and uh, how did you try to solve it? All the time. <laughs> um, yeah, it's hard to pick out in a specific example, but um, yeah, I, I, I often joke that um, my life's just a series of like Murphy's Law events, you know, and just kind of rolling with it and adapting and uh, figuring out like, okay, what happened there? And uh, let's do better next time, you know? <laughs> um, and then uh, we have our very last question from uh, Jordan is, uh, what are some of your future career aspirations? Um, you know, I'm pretty open to opportunities and kind of seeing where things go, you know, um, I'd love to be able to, you know, write more books. And even if, uh, even if I never got anything else published, I would still be a writer, I would still be creating content in one form or other, whether it's audio or written or, you know, that's just something that I'm compelled to do. And I always appreciate when people get something out of it, you know, it's, um, yeah, uh, just, yeah, I'm, I'm open to possibilities, let's just say. <laughs> um, there is, oh, okay, so there is one thing. Um, I, on top of podcasting during 2020, one of the other things I did was I finally got around to really studying screenwriting and kind of doing a deep dive into that and, you know, the technical side of things and how that all works. Uh, so yeah, if I ever got a chance, I would love to get into that, but, you know, who knows? <laughs> Awesome. And then um, I think we'll conclude with uh, Jeremy's answer as our, as our conclusion. So Jeremy says, why study history? Basically, what Eric said about knowing why things are the way they are. How did people in the past deal with this stuff? Knowing all of that, maybe we can come up with better solutions that are more fair and equitable. Doing better next time. Well said. That, uh, that so thank you, everybody. Great way to. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's not my fault <laughs> okay i'll shut um, up thank you everybody for <laughs> stop it eric <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, thank you, everybody, for participating in um, today's Lit Chat with Eric Slater. Um, Imani, I'm going to hand it over to you for closing remarks. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jasmine and Eric, for being here today. Thank you. Um, so, this has been absolutely amazing.